Well, so far it's fair to say that the ride on the train called Wayne has been a pretty smooth one, unbeaten so far in the championship, just those drop points yesterday against former Premier League outfit in Southampton coming up second day. Hopefully that continues when we take on Blackburn off the back of one new signing on transfer deadline day. But before then, probably our first speed bump in the second round of the Carabao Cup. We're off to Stamford Bridge to take on Chelsea. Episode number three of the Wayne Train here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well. And as I said during the intro coming up today, we take on Chelsea in the second round of the Carabao Cup. The first time that we get a chance to test ourselves against current Premier League opposition. And off the back of that and one new signing on transfer deadline day, we take on Blackburn looking to keep ourselves in an automatic promotion spot in the championship. So if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but off the back of yesterday's episode where we funt Watford and then drop points at home against Southampton albeit that's not too bad a result if you missed that one I'll leave a link to it in the top right corner just one more game in the championship against Wayne Rooney's Birmingham and unfortunately, we go off to a dreadful start in this game. As you can see, only about 25 seconds into this, Kesler Hayden there tries to play that one back with his head to Hazard on goal, but unfortunately, doesn't quite find him. And Stansfield makes the most of it, takes it around our goalkeeper, and puts it away to give Birmingham an early 1 0 lead. Off the back of that, we did get on the front foot, but it took a couple of substitutions in the second half to get us going in this game. And it was Ryan Hardy off the bench for Ben Wayne. We'll discuss that shortly. You got a goal with a half hour left to make it one. Or then Edwards, only a few minutes later, squares that one for Finn Azaz. He makes it 2-1. And thankfully, we grabbed a goal to just make sure we pick up all three points in this game. Right on the 90-minute mark, Miller coming on at left wing. He just makes his way onto the edge of the box. Azaz does go down, but it finds its way to Ryan Hardy. He picks up a double off of the bench, which is very interesting and does give us a 3-1 lead. I did think that taking off Ben Wayne here was a good idea, not because he was playing poorly on a 6.4, but two games in the space of a couple of days, so maybe it would be a good idea to make sure he can play in both these games, considering this is the Wayne train, but good to see that Ryan Hardy can perform well when we do need him to. Also, we did chuck Mumba as a wing back on support for about the last 20 or so minutes of this game, and thankfully that did also pay off, as you can see, definitely the better team in that game based on shot shots on target as well as XG, and thankfully even though it took a long time, we do pick up three points as I said against Wayne Rooney's Birmingham. Poor old Birmingham having to put up with Wayne Rooney in charge from the very start in this save. Unlike real life, so it does mean that we are back near the top of the championship off the back of those drop points against Southampton in yesterday's episode. Now the only team with a perfect record, it is Middlesbrough, but we're in second joint on points with Blackburn and Ipswich Town, and that is because our goal to French off the back of those big wins over the likes of Watford, as well as Huddersfield on the opening day of the season, does mean that goal differential is very healthy, as you can see the big clash coming up second up. In today's episode, we take on Blackburn. Hopefully we can find a way to keep ourselves inside of one of those automatic promotion spots. But first up today, we do take on Chelsea. The first time we take on Premier League opposition in the save now, because this is real world mode, just like in real life, they are dealing with a lot of injuries there currently at Stamford Bridge. Moises Casado's out for a while, as is in Kunku. Also, Buddy Ashile Fafana. Zayek, albeit he's out on loan, so not currently at the club. Shalaba, Betanelli, and also Nicholas Jackson. So this could be a weaker Chelsea team than you would expect to see usually, as well as that, of course, this is the Carabao Cup. Not too sure how seriously they might be taking this competition, but a very interesting chance for us to see here how we do get on against the Premier League opposition. Also, our injury ward here at Plymouth Argyle, which was also quite strong at the start of the season, these days not nearly so bad. Off the back of a couple of players coming back during the course of yesterday's episode, also back now for us is Macaulay Gillespie. He's a centre-back option who can also cover left-backs. We're starting to get a few more options on that left-hand side of defence, which is quite useful because, of course, that was one of our thin areas when we did come into this save at the start of the week. But despite those players coming back from injury, I think we're going to stick with the same lineup that we did play for that second game of yesterday's episode against Southampton for the most part. So now those players coming back from injury make their way into the first 11. Luke Kindle is back, but will only take his place on the bench. He's just quite injury prone. 
then Zaz the same case. But ideally, we'd start Kundal in that second game against Blackburn. We probably, we are more likely to pick up a result. The only other change does come. Lewis Gibson at centre back, a little bit susceptible injury wise there, as you can see. So because of that, instead of him, Dan Scarwell coming on the right hand side at centre back, and Julio will switch out to that ball playing defender role. But apart from that, it's our first choice eleven these days at Plymouth Argyle, at least for now, until that new left winger does come in from Anderlecht on transfer deadline day. That might mean that Callum Wright does end up in an interesting situation. As you can see, his former last couple of games hasn't been quite so good, albeit the same can be said for our main man in Ben Wayne. But hopefully we can do something here in the second round of the Carabao Cup at Stamford Bridge. But it's fair to say I'm expecting this to be our first defeat of the season. Hopefully we can bounce back from it and then pick up some points against Blackburn in the championship because that is the big focus for us here at Plymouth Argyle this season. But seeing as we are taking on Chelsea here in the second round of the Carabao Cup, thought it was a good opportunity for us here to see how we do get on against Premier League opposition for the first time in the save. Hopefully Ben Wayne off the back of a couple of average performances in his last couple. That one yesterday, the second game against Southampton and also, of course, taking him off in that game against Birmingham, albeit, as I said, not really because of performance, because I never do that to Ben, but mainly because we wanted to make sure that he was fit for both games in today's episode. Hopefully he can get back on track here against Premier League opposition. Of course, in real life, he has scored some goals against Premier League opposition this season in Crystal Palace in particular, albeit Plymouth Argyle. They did lose that game. Now here is Chelsea. As you can see, it is quite a heavy looking rotated team for them there. So maybe there's actually more of a chance than I thought here for us to come away with something from this game. I suppose the only downside from playing at Stamford Bridge is I think we'd appreciate it more in a competition like the FA Cup where I believe get a bit more money from the gate takings in that competition compared to the Carabao Cup. But early highlight here, it is in our favour. Only one minute gone now. Bloja does bring Halton down there. No penalty. Not too sure if it was even in the box, but thankfully we do keep possession. Randall plays that one back to Kesler Hayden. Made that error early in that previous game, but before then was doing a great job. He finds Callum Wright, a player who might be in danger of losing his spot in the team for our next game off the back. Of transfer deadline day, but what a start for us here at Stamford Bridge. We are beating Chelsea 1-0. They are just awful, aren't they? Just both in real life and in this save as well. But Kesler Hayden, he's done a great job for us in this save so far. At right back and Cullen right there at left wing gets that bump past Petrovic in goal. And it is a brilliant start. Only five minutes gone. First shot and it goes in the back of the net. And we take a nice early 1-0 lead here. At Stamford Bridge, and so far, Chelsea haven't done too much in this game, albeit there's a highlight off the back of that. Wayne does win that one in the air. Thankfully, we do keep that one down the left-hand side, albeit poor pass there looking for Whitaker. Can't quite find him now. Mudjlik will find hudson Adoy. He starts to cut inside. Might look to get off a shot here. He does. Hazard just gets enough on that to tip that onto the crossbar, and thankfully, doesn't find its way into the back of the net. So a good chance there for Chelsea to grab an equaliser. Thankfully, Hazard just does enough to keep it at 1-0, and they are back on the attack. Halton there with actually quite a good pass up, I believe it is, to the Wayne train, and now Cullum Wright with a chance for us here to get on the counter-attack. The goal scorer, can he give us a chance to make it 2-0? Makes his way inside the box. What a Kafar post! It's another header! He bangs that one home. Very easy shot in the end, because Petrovic was just caught out by that ball, and at the 15-minute mark, we are beating Chelsea 2-0 at Stamford Bridge, maybe a chance for us here to get on a little bit of a cup run in the Carabao, albeit not really the priority, as I said, but thankfully lots of our players in this game not too injury prone in our first choice 11. And off the back of that Blackburn game, there is an international break, so it did feel like a chance for us here to play our first choice 11 in a couple of games in a row prior to that break. Of course, Ben Wayne will probably feature during the international break being a New Zealand international. That might be something that does mean he might need to miss a game off the back of that if he is playing for the All Whites, albeit that might not be the case still for the likes of Chris Wood in that team. But coming up to the half hour, Mark Blosier does get in behind there for Chelsea, the very promising striker. But yet again, Hazard comes up with a good save. Of course, our backup still waiting on Mike Cooper to come back from injury. But so far, we've put the ball in the back of the net from a couple of chances. And Hazard has proven a big difference maker for us so far in this game. Coming up to the half hour mark, still 2 0 in front, but Chelsea continue to pepper us here from set piece. Colwell takes his time. On this one, tries to put this one far post. Thankfully, Halton heads that one away. And now Mumba with a chance to get us on the go here on the counter-attack. Mumba continues to make his way in the opposition half. Will something come from this highlight? We'll wait and see. Unfortunately, gives that ball away to Dasasi. Now Gusto plays that one back to Petrovic. 
he pumps that one deep. It's missed there in the air by one of our centre backs, but thankfully nothing coming from it. And with 10 minutes left in the first half, we are still 2 0 in front. And thankfully, taking our chances when they have been given to us in this game, because as you can tell by the stats, they're quite even in this game at the moment. Now, it is Julio who picks up a yellow card, so that might mean that Gibson does come on for the second half, but Stamford Bridge should be pretty quiet here at half time here in the second round of the Carabao Cup. It's been a very even game. Thankfully, Hazard's come up big for us with a couple of big saves, and down the other end, we've scored two goals from headers through Connor Wright and through Morgan Whitaker. So things going very well for us here at halftime in the second round of the Carabao Cup. Everyone out there as well is on a decent ranking, but that yellow card to Julio Pregozello does mean we'll take him off here for Lewis Gibson at halftime. Not ideal because he's a little bit injury prone at the moment, but hopefully that doesn't prove too costly for us during the rest of this game, but very happy with the scoreline here at halftime. Hopefully we can hold on and make sure we make our way through to the third round of this competition and take our first big scalp in the save here at Plymouth Argyle in Chelsea. That would be rather hilarious, it's fair to say, because with a team expected to be in the relegation zone in the championship, this would be a big old upset, but it's fair to say we're playing a lot better than a team who should be in that position come the end of the season. Hopefully we can actually find ourselves closer to the promotion hunt. If we can pick up a decent result here, hopefully that momentum does continue into that Blackburn game. They actually got knocked out by, I think, Mansfield from League 2 on the day prior to this one. So an upset result, which did go against them in that case. But on the hour mark, Morgan Whitaker is playing well, but is down to a red heart. So Tyreek Wright can come on for him. That'll be our second substitution. Still got two more stoppages off the back of that one. But we'll praise our guys because we're still doing a brilliant job here to be beating Chelsea now. Yellow card to Scar and also Azaz down to a red heart. Luke Kundal can get some game time coming back from that injury that he did suffer during the course of yesterday's episode. And I don't actually think we can make too many changes in terms of our defence. So that yellow card to Dan Scar just going to have to ride that one out for the last 25 minutes of this game. But thankfully so far not much happening in the second half. We don't mind that. And coming up to 20 minutes left, we are still 2 nil in front. It might be time for us here to make our last couple of of its substitutions, Randall's down to a red heart, so Matt Butcher can come on for him. We've also got one more sub now. Ben Wayne is on a 6.5. This is where things get interesting. Do we save him up for that game against Blackburn in the championship? I actually suspect we do. I know it's going to be controversial with the save being the Wayne train, but the championship is the big goal for us this season. I think we can maybe just give him a rest in the Carabao Cup when we do need to. Ryan Hardy off the back of a good performance off the bench in that Birmingham game can come on for the latter stages of this one. So that's all our subs use. The Wayne train can get a little bit of a rest here, but thankfully it looks like it won't be going off the rails just yet as we are 2 up against Chelsea, albeit a highlight does start shortly off the back of that. Somehow Kesler Hayden gets beaten to that ball by Mudrick, but thankfully he misses the target. Not too sure if that actually came off the post or it just went well wide, but thankfully Mudrick does miss the target off the back of that. Now it's right who's down to a red heart maybe should have taken him off instead of Ben Wayne, but Chelsea are getting chances here, but thankfully not quite hitting the target. We are still 2-0 in front. We continue to pick up yellow cards this time. It is to Kesler Hayden. We're about to make our way into the last five minutes of this game, and now it's time for us, I think, to start time-wasting, try and hold on here and pick up a big win in the second round of the Carabao Cup. So we'll tell our guys to be more disciplined also. We're going to time-waste just a little bit and also tell our goalkeeper to slow the pace down as well and just hope that that does the job here and Chelsea don't grab a couple of goals in Fergie time with a few minutes left. It's actually a free kick for us here. We play that to Tyreek right on the edge of the box, albeit Butcher gets it back in a loose touch and Chelsea do win that one back. Still a couple of minutes left in this game plus injury time and these days injury time, it does go quite deep. In football manager, thankfully, we deal with that initial danger and good ball out there to kill him right and a chance for us, I fought there, to control things, but unfortunately his pass doesn't quite fall at the feet of one of our players. Now, Conor Gallagher is on the ball, plays that one out to Molela Jr. He there somehow burns Kesler Hayden at right back, and it's Molela Jr. who scores his first goal of the season, and Chelsea do find a way back into this game with only one minute of regular time left, albeit also there is still added time, and as we've seen a couple of times in this save already, that gets quite long in FM24 off the back of events like the World Cup last year, but that makes it 2-1, hopefully. We can hold on here. Don't think I'm going to change too much more. We might just tell our guys, though, time waste frequently instead of sometimes. But hopefully that is not a goal which does prove too costly. Just a consolation one there 
for Chelsea also. We might tell Kesla Hayden to go on to defend instead of attack as well and tell Callum Wright to play on support. So we'll just drop a couple of player roles to be slightly more defensive for the last couple of minutes of this game. Still waiting to see how much injury time there is. There's six minutes, so a fair chunk. We do have to get through here, but we're halfway through it. Still with that 2-1 lead. Only one minute left of added time in this game. And we knock out Chelsea in the second round of the Carabao Cup. To be fair, bringing on Hardy for Wayne didn't make too much difference. So thankfully, the Wayne train shouldn't be too offended by that. But goals came to both our wingers, Callum Wright, and then to Whitaker early, both through hitters, they grab one very deep there through Malela Jr. But it's too little too late for Chelsea. As you can see, stats-wise, very even game. But thankfully, we did just do enough of our shots on target. Also, Connor has it in goal. Very good for us. I'd argue probably in this one, man of the match for us, because he made some big saves, especially in that first half. And we knocked Chelsea out of the Carabao Cup in the second round, albeit they are dealing with injuries, but still, that is a big performance from us. We maintain our unbeaten start to the season at Plymouth Argyle off the back of a 2 1 win, a big upset there over Chelsea in the second round of the Carabao Cup. So, a huge upset for us there in that first game of today's episode, knocking Chelsea out of the Carabao Cup off the back of their few awards here for the championship for the month of August, the first month of the save. Ben Wayne, unfortunately, just got bet to player of the month by Jamie Vardy, but still, that's a great start to the save here. Ben Wayne coming second in the Championship Player of the Month, albeit, you'll see shortly, not enough for him to get a New Zealand call-up, which I'm a little bit surprised by, and to be fair, it might actually help us out a little bit if he doesn't play for that team, albeit, still going to be playing international football. Also, Adam Randall, his goal versus Huddersfield was second in goal of the month, and also, continuing with the second place theme, we came second in Manager of the Month, and that was behind Michael Carrick of Middlesbrough with a perfect record. And speaking of Middlesbrough, we have had the draw for that third round of the Carabao Cup. That's coming up in late September. So that could actually be a game we come back for in tomorrow's episode. We will take them on away from home. That's a big clash as well. If we can keep our current positions, that will be a top of the table clash for the championship teams. But in the cup and not in that competition instead. So it could be a big one coming up. In tomorrow's episode, potentially an early preview of a top of the table clash in the championship and also just going back to the inbox. And here are the players who have so far been called up to international duty for that break coming up off the back of this Blackburn game. Asaka, Bundu and Hazard, the latter two, are on senior duty. But for some reason, Ben Wayne only picked for the New Zealand under 23s. Unfortunately, I actually think that does mean he'll be playing quite a bit for those guys, but very surprised to see he has not been picked for the overall senior team, especially off the back of his good start to the season here at Plymouth Argyle. But next up for us today, we do take on Blackburn Rovers, these guys just behind us on the championship table, only because of the fact our goal differential is a lot stronger off the back of those big wins, as I said earlier, over Watford as well as Huddersfield, but they come to this one off the back of their first loss of the season. It was away from home, but against League 2 opposition in Mansfield in their EFL Cups. So based on that, a good chance for us here to maybe pick up another win and keep ourselves in one of those automatic promotion spots in the Championship. Also, just one change to our team from that previous game. In fact, to Luke Kundal, he comes back in for Finazars. Lighter workload, less injury prone, and also attribute-wise, he is a bit better. And also... On the bench, Mustafa Bundu, he's our new signing who did come in on transfer deadline day. He comes onto the bench in place of Mikhail Miller, which was a bit harsh because Miller has been playing pretty well, as you can see. But attribute wise, he's the second best left winger. I actually thought he'd be a bit better than Callum Wright, but that's definitely not the case. So it does mean that our first choice 11 does stay the same, just that one change on the bench with Bundu coming in. For Miller and also Scar still is starting over Gibson, who is still quite injury prone, the only player in our first team who I think we need to worry about too much when they do get onto a heavy workload. But thankfully off the back of this, as I've said a few times, we do have an international break coming up. So hopefully we can give a rest to these guys who are on that heavy workload. But obviously Ben Wayne, that might be a bit of an issue now playing for the under 23s for New Zealand. He might come back from that break tide for our next game in the championship. But hopefully we can pick up a win off the back of that surprising one over Chelsea in that second round of the Carabao Cup, especially with this one being at home against the Blackburn team who, as you saw before, come into this one off the back of a surprising loss. Interesting to see that Colin Hazard not too happy with the role we're using him here at Plymouth Argyle to be fair. 
he did a really good job in that previous game. Unsurprising that a Hazard did perform well at Stamford Bridge, but that was a big performance from him. Pretty much meant that we did pick up the win in that game. Hopefully, we can back that one up, as I said a few times, and make sure we keep ourselves in one of those automatic promotion spots. Hopefully, as well, the Wayne train can just improve his form from those last couple of games. There's our team, as we've ran through a couple of times, just that one change from that previous game starting-wise. That is Kundal coming in for Azaz, and there are Blackburn. They are going with a 4-3-3, so a slightly different formation and a big clash here as second does take on third. To be fair, a draw here wouldn't be too bad, but I think I'm expecting a win here more than that Southampton game yesterday with Blackburn not being quite as good a team on paper, I think it is fair to say. So hopefully we can get a decent result here, albeit Kessler Hayden does pick up an early yellow card. It has come quite early, so we'll just get him to ease off tackles. He might be a player who comes off at halftime, maybe for Matthews, who is on the bench. Now an early throw on here, it is for Blackburn. Looks like they're on the front foot early, which to be fair, does happen a fair bit with this Gagan press. They played it into the mixer for Sam Gallagher. The flag though does go up. On that far side, so thankfully Blackburn, despite the fact that they do catch us out early, thankfully that was offside and it does stay at nil all. But Blackburn, it looks like here, have gone off to the slightly better start. They're keeping hold of the ball a bit more. Now Whitaker picks up a slight knock at the moment. Nothing too serious, but we'll keep an eye out on that. Maybe that means that someone like Wright will come on at some stage during this game as well. So it could be a few changes down that right-hand side for this one, but Whitaker thankfully still able to perform and does make an interception there about halfway through the first half with our next highlight. Now it's Julio who is on the ball, picks out Randall who is growing quite well through training as is the Wayne train as well. He's training the house down here at Plymouth Argyle, but Scar plays that one for two Houghton. Now it goes back to Julio. We take our time here as we do look to play out from the back. Now Mumba starts to make a bit of headway down that left-hand side, plays that one back to Houghton and now we start to go for Ben Wayne. Good pass there. To young Randall, he picks out Kessler Hayden down that right-hand side. He might take on the shot here himself, he does. But unfortunately, it just goes wide. Might have even come off the post there. Our first big chance, but unfortunately, can't put the ball in the back of net. But it just feels like now, stats-wise, maybe starting to get on the front foot here in this home game. Hopefully, we can pick up maximum points here in front of our home fans at home park. And Kessler Hayden, again, with that good pace, is making the most of it. Floats this one to the mixer. Looks for Ben Wayne. Unfortunately, can't quite find him. Blackburn, we're looking for a chance there on the counter-attack, but thankfully, we break that up from that long ball. And now Mumba back in position, plays that one back to Julio just inside of the opposition half. Now Mumba tries to play one in the behind there, but unfortunately Blackburn, they do deal with that danger. Now Volstead just goes forward a little bit before playing that one to volume at the back for Blackburn. Poor pass there though from the goalkeeper, Randall, on the end of that one. Now Whitaker just inside the box. Tight angle, takes on the shot, but Volstead makes a good save, makes up that poor error, which nearly led to the opening goal, but unfortunately he makes a decent save. So still nil all. We take a short corner this time. Kundal back in the team for this one. Finds right inside the box. Another shot from a tight angle. So that looks like a strategy we're taking in this game, which is interesting. But again, Wolstead, he makes a good save to keep it at nil all. Now Whitaker, will we go short again? Yes, we do. Kundal back to right. Now Whitaker on that slight orange injury. Hopefully that's not too serious. We spray that one out now to Helton. Now Scar, the center back, probably not the player. We want shooting. It goes back to Kessler Hayden. Is it going to amount to anything this highlight? No, it does not. And just past the half hour mark, it is still nil all. But as I said before, it does just feel like starting to go on the front foot and the stats do suggest that as well. So hopefully we can find a goal here before half time and go into the sheds with some sort of advantage. But time is running out. So it looks like that might not be the case. Three minutes of added time. Whitaker is now down to a red heart. So he's probably going to come off at half time as will Kessler Hayden, despite the fact he's playing quite well also. Connor writes on a 6.4, as is Ben Wayne. So a couple of players out there who are struggling, but we'll deal with those players for a bit more of a risk just because those yellow cards and the injuries that they have picked up. So Joe Edwards, he can come on. Or Kessler Hayden, that's a bit of a risk because Kessler Hayden is playing quite well, but on that yellow card, probably a safe one. Also in place of Morgan Whitaker, we'll bring on Tyreek Wright and see what he can do during the course of the second half. But fairly happy with the way that we're playing. It would be a bit nicer if we could get those shots off a bit more in front of goal instead of from those tight angles. But hopefully, we can continue to play well. It does feel like during the course of that first half, we were the better team towards the end of it. Hopefully, that continues here in the second half. And we might actually tell Ben Wayne here, just make sure that he relaxes for the second half. And now he's uncertain, so... I was trying to get him back into form there, but that might not have been the way to do it. So hopefully the Wayne train um, 
stays on the tracks here and doesn't go off the rails a little bit, but it is threatening to be the case as ratings the last couple of games haven't been too great, but it does feel like we've been on the front foot in this game. Hopefully we can get some sort of reward for that in the second half, but coming up to the hour mark, it is still nil all. We'll just check here on some player fitness, obviously off the back of a shorter backup than Blackburn had from that game in the cup where we did beat Chelsea. Now, Halton is down to Red Hart. Lewis Warrington can come on for him. Also, Callum Wright on a 6.6. .6. And that Red Hart, so Bundu can come on for him. I think that's all we'll do for now with a half hour left. Locked up at nil all. We can always take off the Wayne train if we need to. And maybe also Chuck Mumba onto support at left back because that's something that we did do late in that game where we did take on Birmingham prior to today's episode and came back to pick up some points. But shortly off the back of those subs, we do have the ball here and Bundu is in position inside the box. He does take on a shot, but unfortunately, again, from a tight angle, Forstead does make a decent save. Now, Kundal, orange injury and not playing too well. And Edwards as well picks up an orange injury. So maybe the Gagan press here is starting to prove a bit costly in terms of of the injuries that we are picking up, we'll take off Kundal with this last sub. That's a deep red hard. Finn Azaz can come on for him. And also, I might just chuck Mumba onto support, as I said, like we did late in that game against Birmingham. And hopefully that might just mean we're a bit more threatening in attack. We're certainly the team here who are on the front foot, but unfortunately, no reward for it so far. With only 15 minutes left in this one, although we do get a free kick, albeit it is very deep in our own half. And unfortunately, Blackburn do win the ball from that. Now, Makande makes his way down their right-hand side. Can we win this one back? We can't. They now have it on the edge of the box. Britain with a firing low bullet there into the bottom right corner. And with only really their second attack of the game in their first one that wasn't from an offside position, Blackburn, they do take the lead. And maybe it's time for us to suffer our first defeat in this save. We did beat Chelsea, but maybe we're paying the price for that with not resting enough of our first team players, Hazard. Tries to get down to that one, but unfortunately, it just goes below him. It's a very good shot there from Britain. And now it's time for us to demand more. And hopefully these guys can pull finger a bit. And shortly off the back of that, we are now down the right end here for a from Bundu right on the edge of the box. But unfortunately, he loses out on position there to Ennis. And now Blackburn, it does feel like, do have the momentum in this game. But hopefully we find a way to change that. And now Zaz, big chance here for Ben Wayne. He puts it away, the Wayne train. And it's an absolute gift that from Blackburn. But thankfully... We make the most of that one. Looks like he's trying to go there like a train himself with that celebration, flying towards the crowd. But the Wayne train back in the goal. So maybe that halftime talk wasn't as bad as I did think. But Hyam, that's a shocking pass. Strand to Azaz. He picks up an assist off the bench. And Ben Wayne, if he missed that one, that would have been a bit of a disaster, thankfully. He puts that one away. And now a chance for us here to potentially go on and pick up all three points, albeit the way that this game has gone. A point might not be too bad. We'll go attacking for the late stages of this one. Eight minutes as well of added time, so plenty of time still left to go in this game, but unfortunately, no highlights. It does mean for the second game in a row at home, we are dropping points in the championship, which is a bit frustrating, especially when you look at the stats and the XG, but thankfully, Ben Wayne does rescue us a point from that game late, albeit off the back of a very poor error from a Blackburn defender, and it is a one or draw, not too bad, considering, of course, that Blackburn were third coming into this game, albeit off the back of that previous loss in the EFL Cup against Mansfield. That did feel like a chance for us there to potentially pick up all three points, but thankfully we come back from 1-0 down and do pick up a result. We'll tell the guys we didn't get the result, but we should be happy because if we play like that, we should get a result more often than not because we were certainly the team on the front foot based on stats, but unfortunately just didn't quite equate to the scoreboard in that one, but thankfully we come away with something from that second game of today's episode, one or draw against Blackburn, which does mean we are still near the top of the championship table, but these days in a playoff spot in third. So we left it late there, but thankfully come away with something from that second game of today's episode. As I said, not too bad of a result, but I did think that Blackburn probably a bit more beatable than Southampton were the team that we did take on in today's episode. But thankfully, despite the fact that this time we were well on top, we do come away with something from that game. And it does continue our unbeaten start to the season off the back of that big upset win over Chelsea in the second round of the Carabao Cup, albeit we are now in a playoff spot instead of an automatic promotion one. But before we do wrap things up, for today's episode, as you can see, three injuries we need to check on here, albeit we do have an international break coming up, so 14 days till our next game. First up, Morgan Whitaker, thankfully not too serious, only one to three days, and in fact it does look like 
all these injuries aren't too serious. Thankfully, Luke Kendall also one to three days with a bruised ankle. And as well as that, we do have, I believe it's Joe Edwards, who of course came on in the second half. He's got a tight calf that will only keep him out for one to two days. So thankfully, those injuries, not serious at all. No one will be out for our next game in the championship where we do take on Preston and also Ben Wayne back in the goal scoring action. That does mean he keeps himself in second spot on that top goal scorer chart. But these days, that average rating has dropped quite a bit to no longer amongst the top three for that in the championship. But that will do it for today's episode. Big upset win over Chelsea first up in the Carabao Cup at Stamford Bridge. And then we just do enough late to pick up a draw against Blackburn in the championship. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. I think we'll go for it a little bit more before we come back for tomorrow's episode, seeing as we are now through the transfer window, and I'm starting to get my bearings a bit more here on FM24. Our next couple of games look a little bit easier. We take on Preston and Bristol City there down near the bottom of the championship, albeit those games are both away from home. We'll definitely come back and take on Middlesbrough in the EFL Cup off the back of that big upset win over Chelsea. Also, those guys, of course, are top of the championship and as well as that we've got Norwich and Hull City I think Norwich are currently the team in a bit better form so we'll come back tomorrow take on Norwich in the championship another home game hopefully we can actually pick up a win this time and off the back of that we'll take on top of the table Middlesbrough in the third round of the EFL Cup so until then thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and I'll see you then cheers